for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is for the players, the pop culture is PlayStation podcast. Over 40 years of playing PlayStation and 10 plus years in the games meeting bl- combined. I want to thank you for joining us in this PlayStation conversation. This PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. But if you want to take part in future conversations with us, come and check out our socials Discord, Instagram, Twitter. Facebook still doesn't exist, I believe. No, We're getting there. I've we'll been, get there I've eventually. I've been lazy, all right? We'll get there eventually. Come and check those out. Our links are in the description below. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash thepopculturist, where you can watch us record this show live, where you can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can tell your friends, tell your family about this position pod. If you are listening on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash thepopculturist, as well as our merchandise store, pocross.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. Once again, recording out of our regularly scheduled time, just because I'm the fuck that makes all move around. M- Max, you got to be sick of my bullshit at this point, eh? Ah, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, as long as I get, as literally as long as I get a day's notice, it's all good. Yeah, sweet. Well, I kind of got, I kind of got like a couple of days' notice. So we're recording on a Saturday night, com- contrary to our usual Sunday night. Reason being because Max, I know you don't give a flying crap because you're not very fun, but it is WrestleMania weekend. You mean I took time out of my Saturday night so you could fucking not record for WrestleMania? No, well, yes, Man. technically, but not just because Ugh. I'm watching it. Because I could watch, Ugh. I could watch it, I could watch it at home without any hesitation. I think I just broke my UGG boot trying to take it off my foot. Um, the I'm doing something a little bit different this year, Max. So you're not watching it? Oh, fuck <laughs> off, not happening. So a couple of weeks ago, a week or so ago, like WWE Australia will put put up a competition on their face on the Twitter to be like, hey, do you want to come to the uh, the official WWE watch party in Sydney? I was like, yeah, sure. Blah, blah, blah. Answered it, bing. Two days ago, I get an S- I get a Twitter message. Hey, congrats. I'm like, what? Oh, shit. Okay, how the fuck am I going to get to Sydney? That's kind of the thought process that I had. And then out of nowhere, my mum goes, I'll pay for you. And like, my mum doesn't pay for shit. Nor do I ask her, really. It's probably one of those big things. Like, I know the mom, the bank of mom helps helps you out all the time, Max. You're very, you're, you're very, you know, Nanny K is brilliant. Oh, yeah. But my mom, I just don't, I just don't ask her. I just, I just never ask her for money because I, I, I don't like asking people for money. But she offered and she goes, look, and she says, yeah, I don't buy you shit. Here's, this is a cool opportunity. You love wrestling. You love, you know, you're excited for WrestleMania. Go watch it with the team at WWE Australia. Schmooze, kiss hands, shake babies. Who knows what this could be? I was like, okay. So I booked I booked some fl- flights. So I leave uh, Geelong at six o'clock tomorrow morning. That's Sunday, the 2nd of April for those playing at home. Uh, I fly out at 6 a.m. Go to the, this, this, the, the wherever it's being set up at like 9 a.m. Watch the wrestling for a couple hours. Uh, catch a flight out at about 5 land in Tal Marine in Melbourne, catch a bus back here at hit a Geelong, go to sleep, wake up, do day two of Mania for Monday because I took the day off work. And because I don't get back to like nine-ish and knowing the Max starts work at like 11-ish, um, I was like, hey, yeah, I don't want to fuck with Max too hard. Let's record tonight instead of tomorrow. So because I'm off gallivanting across the state to watch WrestleMania, which is an insane story, by the way, just the idea of flying into state just to watch a pay-per-view that I could watch here for free, or or like, you know, I was going to watch it here anyway, except now I get to go to a bar and probably, you know, get drank and fed and and have a good time with WWE Australia. Nothing but win. I have, a, I have a, like a mental erection just thinking about it. Possibly a physical one. So Max, um, are you are you going to watch WrestleMania? 
Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I get enough fucking WrestleMania bullshit on my TikTok feed. Thank you very much. There's nothing to do yeah. with me. Uh, that is your the algorithm. The algorithm's so broken. Apparently, all I like is watching funny animal videos, funny kid videos, and Rey Mysterio punch his dad. Like, oh, Dominic Mysterio no, punch Dom, his dad. Dom, Dom, Dom Mysterio punch oh, his dad. Oh, well, that matches tomorrow. Just saying. It's going <clears> to <throat> be awesome. And said, so you're welcome to come. Like, I won't be home, but, you know, Craig and Angie and stuff I, will be here. I won't be home, but my house will be open. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. But my housemate, like, my housemate will be here. My mate Craig will be here. You can come and watch WrestleMania here. Have funsies. Or not, you know, because... I'm hoping to see John Wick tomorrow. We'll see what Ooh, happens. Oh, man, I watched John Wick 1 again, again the other day. Fuck, it's good. Fuck, it's so good. What else you been up to, man? How's things? Oh, fucking what a week I've had. Oh, not as exciting as mine by the sounds? <laughs> uh, uh, no. Um, so, on on Monday... So, a couple of weeks ago, we all got COVID. Oh, we yeah, recovered yeah, right, from yeah. them. But my kids had this gnarly residual cough. Yes. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take her to the doctor. It's gonna get, gotta, gotta get her checked out. Turns out she has this fucking viral infection now. So she's got it uh, like an inhaler. And they're like, if it gets worse, put her on the amoxicillin. I'm like, well, fuck that. If it gets worse, let's just we'll do both. Mm. So I had stayed up. Uh, so I had worked Sunday night into Monday morning. I stayed up Monday morning to to do this, uh, knowing that I was taking Hadley to to the doctors, but. During work at about two o'clock Monday morning, mm. Ali's like, Hadley's thrown up everywhere. She's had a coughing fit. She's thrown up everywhere. We're sleeping in your bed. I'm like, okay, no worries. 30 minutes later, I get another message. The fucking power's gone out. And I'm like, okay, well, during my, when I have to finish my shift up, I'll come home, oh, um, flick, the, flick the breakers, and I'll go back to work. I'll make sure you have power. Got So I came home, flicked the breakers. Wouldn't fucking turn back on. So I pulled all the PowerPoint, all the appliances out of the PowerPoints, flicked it back on, was was mint, sweet. I'm like, I'll deal with the rest of it when I get home from work. Go back to work, finish my shift, come home. And then do the arduous task of fucking plucking one appliance in at a time to see which prick doesn't work. Fucking spoiler alert, my fridge is dying. Woo! <laughs> um, so I stayed up all day Monday, um, taking Headley to... Taking Hadley, took, you know, Hadley to the doctors, then doing this uh, to do the fridge, and then I got bad news about my house. What? Because because I had to ring to make sure that the fridge that I was buying was going to fit in the fucking spot oh, good idea. at the new yeah, house. Good point. Good point. So like, hey, I need to get, I need access to the house. I need to be able to get in and take some measurements. He's like, oh, okay, cool, no worries. Um, bad news, you won't be in for your final inspection this coming Friday. And I'm like, oh, what do you mean? What happened? He's like. Ah, uh, there's some faults. There's a fault in the framework what? of the house. Well, at least they know. And I'm like, so what's the, what happened? So outside, we've got like a little alfresco area. Yeah. Um, and the corner of the roof is held up by a post. Yeah. Um, uh, but the wood that they used was slightly thinner than you normally would. So instead of being bolted together, because the wood's too thin to be bolted, they've strapped it, which is fine and engineerly sound but they were supposed to get an engineer to check off on it first and they never did. before before they bricked it and they never did it was the only one that they didn't get checked because there's two of these posts in the in the house yeah there's, and this one they didn't why did they check one but not the other uh it wasn't just our house that failed three houses on our street that these guys are building one of the the same post failed in each house because they didn't do all of them properly wow so the the site manager is like, I'm really hoping that the engineers, because they've approved the other ones, they will approve this one based off the photos that we took for them. Mm. Otherwise, we're going to have to pull off, pull down all the bricks, get them to recheck it, and then brick it all back up. Well, they're paying for that, obviously, right? <laughs> yeah, obviously, that's not that's not our fault. They did, they fucked it up, but it now means that we're probably getting pushed back about two weeks. Well. All right. Well, two weeks is not much comparatively <sighs> Look, it's, to how it's long n- you've had to wait. It's not, but when you were told that you'd be in your house by Christmas, and it's now April, I feel and it's now April, like it's just getting sucky yeah, because that's five months of of rent you didn't want to pay. Yeah. So it's also five months of just interest payments on a mortgage. So we're not even paying any money off our yeah. home loan yet. We're just paying interest. So, ew. It's it's one of those things that it's it's. Although we're not 
paying for it, but we're paying for it. Yeah, yeah. So when we got out there, the um the fridge we were looking at fits. Which is cool. Is, they is there any they chance just, they can reimburse you for the delays? They will have to soon once their contract is up with us. Mm, so I that? think it's I think this week. <gasps> That's at least some money. So I think they'll pay a portion of it, like they'll pay our rent and a portion of the uh, interest of cool. the mortgage. So it should should work out too that's, bad. That's a slight win. Yep. Um, but we're talking to the side managers, like you know, you, out of all the people that we've had to delay, you guys have been kind of chill about it. I'm like, what's the point in getting mad? Like, we can we can come in, kick up kick up a fucking stink, and all that's gonna do is take you away from work. And that's what we want you to do. Yeah, yeah, bang on. Like, we want you to, like, why would we waste your time when you could be working on a house? Like, it seems stupid to me. And he's like, so, he's like, company policy is we don't order your appliances in until after the the check is cleared for the bank. He's like, I've pre-ordered your appliances. I'm going to ah. have them installed. So, the second the bank check clears, I will hand you the keys and then you don't have to wait around a couple of days while we install all your See, shit. See, that is why being nice, has, like just being polite and courteous and just a the, good person. The other thing is when we rocked up, he's like, did you fucking change the locks on the front door? And we're like, no, why? And he's like, because that is not the standard lock that we put in it. He's like, that's like an $800 lock that's in the door. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'm like, I definitely wasn't asked. And he's like, do you want to keep it? I'm like, yeah. Yes, clearly. And he's like, okay, cool. I'll get some keys for it. <laughs> Sweet. All right. So cool. He has no idea who did it, but apparently it's not their usual lock. And it's not, he's not, like, not on the and he, list. And, and he just assumed that it was us. He just, he's like, you guys must have put a fancy lock on your door. But it's not on the order list? I don't know. Well, he's the, he's the second site manager we've had, and that yeah. door's been on there for quite some time. Okay. I was like, you're like, oh, I didn't pay for it. It turns out it's been on your invoice the whole time. So I, I just thought it was funny. <laughs> it is pretty funny. You know what's also pretty funny? You've been trying to play some games this week, Max. Oh, God. To no avail. Yeah. yeah. So we were... Uh, this, uh, one, forget what day it was this week. Woke up to a lovely email from PlayStation Australia being like, Hey! I'm like, oh, sweet. Is it MLB the show? Nah, it wasn't. That's a bum. First year in like six years, I've not I've, I've not been, right, provided a, uh, been provided a review code for MLB. But... What we did get instead, Max, was uh, The Last of Us, part one, on PC. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. We didn't ask for it, but all right, mad. Oh, Max has got a pretty dope PC. I'll send him the code. <laughs> oh, it's been rough. Oh, um, has it now? So, look. <laughs> look, you know, credit where credit's due. Shout out to PlayStation Australia for, for yeah, providing man. us a code. Um, installed fun. Mm. And when you boot up the game, it's like, hey... I'm going to install the shaders. We recommend you don't play the game until the shaders are installed for, for a better experience. I'm like, cool. Makes sense. So I leave it open. Um, I'm fiddling through all the graphic, just uh, like the graphic settings to see what, you know, what, what my computer defaulted it to. And my computer defaulted it to ultra, which uses 115% of my fucking <laughs> and graphics capacity so I'm like well that's not wise that's let's not just good. turn that let's turn that down a bit um well seeing as you and i were so, conversing and like you pulled up the specs went i can't run this yeah so i'm running i've got a i've got a 4070 ti in my computer and i can't i can run it on high and it uses 98 percent of my v -RAM. v ram in my graphics card that's fucked and then the game proceeded to crash I'm like, oh, cool. Awesome. No worries. And then I did some internet sleuthing and it turns out a lot of people are having issues and Naughty Dog are aware of these issues and they're like, hey, we're, we're going to push a hot fix. It should be up well, it's the not next even, day. It's not even Naughty Dog. It's made by somebody else. It's made by the same guys that did Arkham. Fuck, what's their name? <laughs> I'll find out. So after the hot fix, I installed the hot fix. I, I, you know, I patched all my drivers to make sure my, like, in, my NVIDIA GeForce drivers are all up to date and did all that stuff. Opened it up to the main menu again. Fucking crashed again straight away. I'm like, okay, awesome. No worries. At this point, I still haven't installed the shaders. The shaders are sitting at 20% complete. Iron uh, Galaxy. That's their name. So it's not even Nixus, like the in-house fucking team that, that does PC ports. Some randos. Yeah. Why? Um, and then again, just before I tried to... um, 
just before we started recording, I had it open just to install the shaders because yeah. you have to have the game running to install them. Man, just closed. Just randomly closed. No error message, no nothing. Just fucking turned off. I'm like... Main menu looks real nice, though. Yeah, I imagine it would look awesome. <laughs> have you seen some of the screenshots? Yeah, so I... Um... I like the one with like the, the low-res Joel. Oh, it's Brent. Yeah. Some of the stuff that they sent through with the code because they... We get some like B roll stuff. The ultra widescreen stuff looks mint as. Mm. Now, obviously, I don't have an ultra widescreen monitor, so I'm I'm not gonna get. I that, do, but... but my PC is trash. I would love to um, I'd love to play the game. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. But not I can't. even in, not even in widescreen, just in regular screen. Yeah, just in regular screen. So they are aware of the issues. Apparently, a larger patch is being pushed early next week. Mm. Actually, a smaller patch is being pushed early next week with the larger patch to be done shortly afterwards, end of week-ish. So hopefully by then I'll actually get some hands on it because it's really the only thing I was looking forward to playing this week. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to touch Resi Evil. Mm. Uh, after my shit show of a Monday and a Tuesday, I didn't catch back up on sleep until about Thursday afternoon. And I've just played nothing, really. My, my week has been just sleeping. Yeah. Actually, I, I was actually sitting at my computer before because we, we had planned to record a little bit earlier tonight. And Ali, I, so I came up here at about 6.30. Now Ali's like, oh, what are you going to do about Hadley? And I said, I'll just send her in. I'll say goodnight. It doesn't matter if I'm streaming. Just just let her come in. She'll be all right. Um, and it turns out I fell asleep at my computer desk and Hadley's getting <laughs> the shit out of me when, I, when, she, when she walked in. Yeah. <laughs> so that was funny. But yeah, I'm just yeah. It's been it's been a bloody week. Yeah. I've, what about you? What have I, what have you been? I saw you playing fucking Minecraft Dungeons again today. Yes, yeah, so I played. I had my son over, so we played Minecraft Dungeons today. Uh, he played like I know you. I know the age of like PSVR is like twelve or whatever. But he was nagging me. He's like, Dad, can I play VR? Can he I was he VR? was so shattered when I came and took it that day. Yeah, because you grabbed it la- uh, <laughs> two weeks ago. Just like fuck Max. Yeah, fuck Max <laughs> specifically. I want to play VR. Why has Max got the headset? Because it's Max has put money in it. It's part of the deal, bud. I'm sorry. So today, he booted it up. He did play one game, but it was a bit, it was a bit complicated for him. So then we ended up settling on Tentacular. Because the game's simple. It's physics. It's basic physics. It's just two hands. Like, not complicated. Not a lot of extra buttons. It's just pick up shit and move it around with tentacle hands. So I strapped it to his head for a little while. Really shouldn't have because he's like six. And like, you know, it's like you know, half the age of the recommended whatever. But he has he was having a blast. So he was just picking up things, yeeting them, building building towers out of the things and just having an absolute blast. He had a, a an exceptional time playing PSVR. Um I played a little bit PSVR this week. It's a game I still can't talk about because I've got like another couple of days left on it. I've had it for, m- for what feels like months now. But I still can't talk about it. <laughs> but I will. Um, spent some time with Resident Evil 4 as well uh, once again not as much as I'd want to a couple of hours extra in game is still really really good uh, After I would highly recommend you check out Digital Foundry in terms of like hey these are the best settings to have the game running because it just benefits from having a bit of extra uh, tweaking to it just because it's not as awesome as it could be um, which is for, for one thing but other than that it's brilliant I'm noticing a lot of the differences now in terms of, you know, like as I was playing it last week and they're like, oh, okay, cool. I'm seeing where they've expanded the world and they've altered some paths and added some extras. I'm like, this is really cool because obviously they've removed all the seamless, um, sorry, they removed the, the loading screens. So everything's seamless now. So previously, you'd, you know, gate loading screen and you're, you're in a new era. So they've had to create these whole new environments just to connect to locations which has been awesome mm. so just adding a bit of that fleshes out which is a bit and as i touched upon last week the removal of the tank controls has caused in order to sort of keep that tension they've actually made the the infected or the you know those infected by the last plagas whatever the fuck it is um they're a lot more aggressive and quick not quite like uh 28 days later zombies not quite dawn of the dead zombies but like they've got a bit of pace in them there's a bit of aggression like freakers 
not oh, not quite as oh yeah freakers is probably close but like they'll they'll swarm you very quickly they 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 clump together a lot so like even if they come at you you just get fucking rooted but not in the same way that like daisy's freakers would it's very very good um i this will make you happy max and i bought it for no reason i was, it was on sale and i was like oh yeah i did want to play that again it was fun on vita but i want to play it on ps4 do you know what I bought this week? No. Persona 4 Golden. Oh, really? Yeah. It was on you sale. fucking weeb. Yeah, fuck you. Um, like, I, lo- <laughs> I really enjoyed it on the Vita. I really quite liked Persona 4 Golden. It was a really cool game. And I was like, oh, I just want to play on the Vita. And I'm like, it's on console. Sweet. Done. Deal. It was on sale. Excellent. Haven't touched it yet. <laughs> but what I have been playing a lot of, and I've talked about it last week too, is... I guess I kind of just want like a checkout game because I've been playing a lot of tools up. You know, as in every morning before work, I go to a couple levels and scoot off to work. So, you know, I completely three start all of it and buy myself in like one run, you know. Like, hey, cool, that's cool. I'm doing all the DLC and stuff now. I'm not having any major dramas or challenges. I'm just like ripping through it. And it's actually kind of cool. Like not having to, some, some levels take a little second to go, oh, that's what it is cool but then most of them you can just kind of rip through without thinking too hard which is fun it's nice mm. like it's a minor challenge like oh let's rethink this puzzle yeah there it is got the answer cool i'm enjoying that a lot too but other than that it's been a really quiet week i have didn't i didn't even play any wwe 2k gm mode i'm watching a lot of is that, is that is i was gonna say isn't that your usual thursday night well thursday we watched john we watched john wick instead uh, and then we watched two videos about GM mode instead, but how to ha- how to make a better run, because Craig, Phoebe, and myself are all garbo at it. We're like, well, let's let's watch some videos about how to do it better. And then we found a video of a guy who who made an entire roster just out of the lowest and cheapest custom ca- created characters, and how he managed to turn them into like five star matches beating everyone else and just demolishing i was like man we just suck at this game like if this guy can do it and destroy like that we're missing something we're not smart enough it seems but other than that i haven't really played a whole lot it's been pretty quiet week not a lot of time sitting in front but right now though i was talking this like i am fucking itching to play dredge and i don't know why it looks it looks like you know boat inventory management tetris the game and i want to play it it looks mint it's getting really good scores like i know uh, a good friend of the show a good friend of the show buddy watson reviewed it for explosion network gave it a 10 um and buddy and i don't always have the same taste in games but when when our tastes do collide they're brilliant options and this looks to be one of those brilliant options and i it looks to be a bets in as hell game I don't want to play it so bad. I'm think, I've been thinking about it. I'll probably buy it and then go, eh, and then I'll play it, which mm. I'm pretty good at. But we'll see what happens. See what happens. <sighs> All right. Anyways, should we, should, we, sh- should we get into the meat and potatoes? We should. Actually, Let's, that, yeah, we, we, you have to get up in like fucking six hours. Oh, shit, I actually really do. Um, yeah, let's get into the section we call Inform the Players, where we tell you about what happened this week in PlayStation. Uh, the PlayStation Plus Essential Games for April... The lineup has been announced. The fuck, this came out of we, nowhere. There was like no rumors, no nothing. It's like, hey, here it is. Uh, yeah. uh, we have Meet Your Maker, PS5, PS4, Sackboy, A Big Adventure, hey. PS5, PS4, and Tales of Iron, PS5, PS4. Uh, I don't know about the first one. Sackboy's fine. Tales of Iron, no idea. Yeah. yeah. Seems all right. Are we doing the back and forwards on these ones too? Let's, let's go back and forwards Fucking all the way through. Because... Oh, Shuhei Yoshida. He's an award winner. Did you know that, Max? Mm, I did. I think uh, we spoke about him winning it last week, yeah, despite we did, the fact yeah. he only received it this week. Yeah, he got, <laughs> we told that we got, we got spoiled that he was going to win it. Because they're like, hey, next week we're going to give him this award. I'm like, that's cool. So yeah, Shuhei, Shuhei Yoshida is a decades-long video game industry veteran, serving as president of Sony Interactive Entertainment Worldwide Studios through a crucial time in PlayStation's history. He currently serves as head of Sony's independent developer initiative, supporting indie devs as they bring their projects to life by making partnership and marketing deals a reality. You know, like the time we went to PAX Australia and didn't 
talk to us. Try again this year. But mm. there is a perception that the PS5 is not a welcoming or an, of an environment for indies as, a, as the previous generation, especially PS4. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, Yoshida discussed the challenges involved with getting the message out there <clears throat> and what he hopes to achieve in the future, stating, quote, We're trying to change the perceptions of the challenge of developing and publishing games on PlayStation. Pardon me. It's a communication challenge we've been working on. This is being accomplished through something of a PR blitz, which you see it describes, quote, we've been doing conference tours, going to events and doing talks and keynotes and things like that to send the message that we're open for developers to bring their games to PlayStation, end quote. The biggest issue indie developers face is discoverability, which Yoshida acknowledges, noting, quote, there are so many great quality games that no one knows about. The challenge to get funded has always existed, but there's more and more money coming into the industry all the time. Digital storefronts can have alt, uh, unlimited numbers of games because they're digital, but there's only so much space at the front of the store. End quote. Now, Max, like, you probably have a greater indie taste than I do. Like, I predominantly play the big boys and, and whatever the strong, like, the mm. strong indies that kind of grab my attention. Um, but you're the one that's willing to take a bunch of risks on some other things. But see, most of my indie gameplay is played on PC because they don't exist over on consoles. Correct, yeah. Because it's so much easier to get it onto Steam or through the Humble Bundle or through one of the one of the myriad of fucking storefronts on a PC compared to just the PlayStation Network yeah, but the, just Xbox Live. But the problem that we have is like Steam is garbage, right? Like it's Oh, no, inundated. it's an absolute dumpster fire. It's, it's, almost as, it's almost as bad as... Actually, it's, it's definitely worse than the, the Nintendo Store. The Nintendo <laughs> Switch Store is just as poo. It is so gross. <laughs> so I can't, um, I'm glad we don't have that. And it seems the, the reduction of those easy platinum games has gone down so if you if you were to pull up the latest re- like if you go to the ps the playstation store pull up the latest releases there seems to be a lot less of them or if they've just been removed from discoverability i don't know but like yeah. they were bombarding like the hey here's the new games coming out this week and there's 16 jumping fucking brownies or whatever so at least that's been reduced but with that presumably that's algorithmic will has that algorithm ruined other indies because playstation used to be a big place for indies like the ps4 was a really good time and it feels like especially on the back of uh the transition to jim ryan from sean Layden, that even in the messaging the communication everything is around that blockbuster release and those blockbuster franchises so to have someone the like the likes of shuhei, Yosh- shuhei yoshida head of indies is really cool but this is someone that was the head of worldwide studios which is now being done by herman holst it's like this he's a reparable dude right and like i understand there is like a, a there should be a more incentive for independent games to be available on the platform but it does feel like he's been crammed off to the side. Mm. And because as of right now, it doesn't feel like this indie problem has been resolved on the console. Not yet, but I hope I hope that it does. Yeah. Speaking of things that uh, need to be fixed. Oh, yeah? <laughs> PSVR 2. <laughs> so a new report from Takashi Mochizuki of Bloomberg claims that sales of PlayStation VR 2 headsets are off to a quote slow start with around 270,000 units shipped to consumers since its late February 2023 launch. This data comes from the research outlet IDC with Francisco Geronimo of the company suggesting quote a price cut on the PSVR 2 will be needed to avoid a complete disaster. Uh, Sony is yet to share any official PSVR 2 sales data and has never made its sales projections public knowledge. The comments and reports follow Sony have, uh, having to officially deny claims made in two previous articles. The scribe suggests the platform holder was having trouble producing PlayStation 5 systems prior to its late 2020 launch, and then reported Sony had halved its PlayStation VR 2 sales estimates for its first quarter. It spends on the market. Uh, for the first quarter, it spends on the market. Sony publicly denied both of these claims, even insisting there was, quote, enthusiasm from PlayStation fans for the upcoming PlayStation VR 2 launch, end quote. 
The official sales data provided by Sukarna revealed that Sony's PSVR 2's device actually pushed sales in the accessory sector up by 13% year over year. What do you think? Uh, look, I expect it to be slow. Um, yes. Mostly because... Especially, especially at the price point that it is. Yeah, at like $800, $900 Australian, whatever the fuck it was, was, yeah, seven ninety five or something, something like that. Um, it, is, it is a lot. It is still cheaper than a PS5 here in this country, in Australia, but the had the had there not been the shortages in 2020 uh i think this would have done slightly better in that as people are only just getting their ps5 consoles now they're not going to then spend another console's worth of money on a boutique accessory i would i would argue against that i have i feel that the people who would be more than more likely to buy a psvr hardware for their console are probably the early adopters oh. who managed to get their ps5s early i don't know if they no, I, I don't disagree with you all i'm just saying hence why my slight difference yeah i was gonna say i don't think there would have been a huge difference if they had more playstation 5s available no i have a feeling that those those diehard fans that were doing it were would have been the ones who would would go for the PSVR too. Yeah, most definitely. And like the price, as you said, the price point is the is the most gnarly thing. And additionally, with VR, and as as much as PlayStation have allowed PSVR one to at its time to be the cheapest, most readily available, like easy to mm. get into VR headset. Since then, the Oculus Quest has, pardon me, or Meta up. Quest has become a thing now. Um, and as a result, the barrier to entry to VR is less than it ever has been. But PSVR 2 is better than Quest, like from a tech standpoint, because it, it's actually, you, it's got a, something to run off of, right? Which is already in itself going to make it better. But when that barrier is so low, anything that's greater than that low seems like a lot. And especially in, in a recession times that the worldwide we are in right now, that level of expendable, expendable income is a lot. Especially when we know that psvr titles are few and far between like if we think about the psvr one there were times where we would get five real ripper games coming out in like two weeks and there'd be nothing for months mm. and i think a lot of people would, are more likely to not pick it up because of that infrequency or at least wait for it to start of you know like pull up a little bit so they'd buy a couple in one go now the difference is we're very lucky in that we've had access to review codes for many of the many of the prominent PSVR two titles, so we've been like us forking out for the headset wasn't a challenge for us. Now knowing that the games would be covered, mm. still a challenge because the prick was expensive, but you know what I mean. Like so we're we're very lucky in that sense. So we are, I do know that like where we sit might not be the best or fairest representation of it, but. You know, even- well, I think I, I think I sent a link to you. I saw a PlayStation VR two popped up on our local Facebook marketplace. Yeah, and someone for was like selling it for like six hundred bucks. Yeah, yeah, for like six hundred bucks. Which means so, they picked up and went yeah, and then flipped it, which is a bummer because I would have bought the shit out of that for six hundred bucks. <laughs> but what? How do you think they can fix it, Mac? Do you think it is as simple as? I think getting. I think. I think getting the price point down. They, they need to do either one of two things. Lower the price point or increase um, available software on it. Yeah. But because one is more controllable by them. And that's the of course. Point. Of course. <clears throat> because if no, one, if no one's ready to go in their games, not much they can do. No, it's for sure. That. All right. Next one is speaking of Australia. This one's a, a local one. This comes from Press Start, written by a friend of the show, Kieran Verbuge, or KV. Uh, and they have written, 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 whatever the oh, fuck, they, wrote. They, defi- they definitely wrote in it. They wrote in it, they wrote in it real good. <clears throat> you can't half tell that I'm knackered and about ready to go to bed. It's not about loot boxes. The Australian government has made an announcement uh, the other day, this, putting forth this week. some proposed changes to the national classification scheme that affects video games, in particular, those offering simulated gambling and loot boxes. Under the proposed reforms, games containing paid loot boxes would be required to carry a minimum rating of M for mature and not recommended for players under the age of 15. 
and any game that contains simulated gambling would immediately carry an R18+, plus. therefore not for sale to anyone under the age of 18. This is an incredibly bold move and would make a massive impact in the market if suddenly games like FIFA and NBA went from G slash PG to an M. The review well, is... The- Sorry, I'll let you finish before I can jump in. The review explicitly points out, quote, casino-style games where the player cannot cash out winnings, end quote, as an example of the latter. But it's unclear if this would extend to many, quote, regular games that include in-game casinos like Dragon Quest or Yakuza or even Pokemon. Or in-world games of chance or if the context could, uh, sorry, or if the context would be taken into account before automatically slapping it on that big R18 rating. Now, when it comes to the Australian classification board, it has been hot garbage in the past. And even something that has real world, like any drug, the real world drug that creates a positive response, gets smacked. So it wouldn't surprise me if they go, there's gambling in it, smack, R18. Because the Australian classification board is incredibly out of touch uh and fuck it up all the time but this is a step in the right direction for me personally yes yeah, so it this came like about a week after it was announced that uh starfield was getting an r18 rating here in australia for drug use oh yeah yeah um i was just gonna point out um he mentions nba <laughs> um not so bad this time because it's just like they'll do boxes and the ultimate packs and stuff but i think it was was it last year's or the year before that literally had a fucking roulette wheel yeah. spin up every time you opened the game? <laughs> yeah. And like, it's one of those uh, things, like, I get it. Right? They're like, oh, it's going to be a problem. To-. No, it's not. Parents are going to buy those games regardless. Like, an, yeah. M ra- an M rating isn't going to disrupt many parents. Like, it's just basketball. Here you go, Bert. So it is one of those things, like, yes, I this- mean, to be, to be fair, I don't think an R18 will bother a lot of people. An I've R18 seen, would. I've seen, I've seen parents walk in and buy GTA for their kids. Oh, me too. I don't give a shit because I don't know what's in it. Yeah, I don't play games. But an R18 basketball game, like Grand Theft Auto, they know what they get. They know what they're getting into. It's Grand Theft. The name's Grand Theft Auto. But if you go, <laughs> hey, here's an NBA game and it's R18. Like, are they naked? Are they, got, <laughs> are they are they hanging dong while they play basketball? Like, what are they doing? Is it basketball? You know, like. <laughs> <Is it> basketball? <laughs> Like, that's, that's what will happen. And then they'll go, look, I'm sorry, it's full of gambling. And they'll go, hang on, I'm not fucking buying. Like, that would be the moment. And it will have an impact. Because kids will go, you know, normally go buy fee for themselves or whatever. And like, oh, you need your parent. Parents are like, what the fuck? Goes, it's full of gambling. And they go, what do you mean it's full of gambling? It's when they just turn around and just buy it on the fucking PlayStation Network and it doesn't matter. Yep. They could <laughs> totally do that too. It's like, it's because you'll get the splash screen. Are you over 18? Yep. yep. <laughs> okay, then. It's like, yep. you know, anytime you look at any, you know, like when you were a kid fucking and you're age, like. Fucking age gating yeah. is the best. Are you over 18? Yes. I prove it. definitely am. <laughs> Say, prove it. Prove it. No. And the website's like, okay, then. <laughs> we did our part. We, we did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I like this because I fucking can't stand loot boxes and, get, and microtransactions, all those things. And this especially as it preys on the neuro the neurodiverse as someone that is neurodiverse don't fucking hurt my people all right and also look i know the rate uh, rating systems poo and like i'm over 18 so i give a flying fuck it doesn't affect me <laughs> i buy any game that i want i don't care uh but it, fe- it affects those damn fucking kids right there's fucking kids in their Fortnite dances guess what <laughs> eat a dick you can't buy the game you like anymore dab to that you little fuck won't somebody please think of the children? I am. <laughs> Fuck them. Uh, Bloobers. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Um, a wave of miscommunication appears to have hit Silent Hill 2 studio Bloober team as the team has taken to Twitter to rectify some inaccurate reports. Uh, while the developer CEO, um, Piona? Yeah, Piona. Sure. <laughs> Bebiano was quoted via, via Google Translate, you know this is always going to end well, <laughs> as saying that the remake is, quote, technically ready, end quote. A new statement out of Blooper Team says this isn't actually the case. It also sought to squash rumors surrounding uh, sales projections of the Silent Hill 2 remake. The statement says, quote, it is also not true that we have announced that Silent Hill 2 is ready for release, regardless of the development stage. All of our activities are focused on obtaining the highest quality for the finished product quality that fans of silent hill 2 deserve we are aware that players are waiting for more information about silent hill 2 
As soon as such information becomes available, we are sure that Konami, the publisher for this game, will share with its fans. Uh, to be fair, Babiano, he di- to be fair to Babiano, he did follow his original quote up by saying, "quote It doesn't mean that the game is finished, but we are close." End quote. Uh, he then reflected the above statement by saying, "Marketing on Silent Hill 2 is largely in Konami's hands." Given these recent comments, fans have been hoping for a release later this year. A launch date has never been attached to the PlayStation 5 remake since its announcement last year. It's all speculation yeah, but, still. But technically ready means it works. That's it. It's technically ready because I can play it a little bit. Mm. That, like, you know, if it's like, oh, it's, it's you know, all but complete. That's it's, it's, a very different not, sentence to technically it's, it's, ready. It, it's not Final Fantasy 16 technically ready. Yeah, you, look, <laughs> look, I know you're all burned wow. out for that fucking game. But look, <laughs> I want, look, there is a lot of pressure on on, on Bloober Team. A, because they have been consistently poo. Uh, secondly, Silent Hill doesn't have a good track record these days. Like, the last good one was, what, three? Four was fine. Then, like, Shattered Memories was poo. Homecoming was poo. And there was another one that I forgot about because it was poo. So, like, there's a lot riding on this, especially after the... And on top of that, the HD remakes they did on PS3 are poo. <clears throat> so, unlike Resi... Oh, and especially on the back of Resi and their incredible remakes, they better do a damn good job. So, I still don't know why they gave it to Bluebird. And I think this mishandling of it just demonstrated the Bluebird can't fucking do it. And at least it's not uh, Blue Box, right? Mm. Still can't believe that just went away and nothing was, nothing's ever been done. <laughs> I want to bring that back uh, up. Can we remember? Let's remember. What's your thoughts? Because are you a Silent Hill fan? No, not remember. at all. No, not at all. So well, even the, well, that's even better then. From an out, from an outside standpoint, you have no investment in the franchise. You, what do you think? What are you feeling? Uh, yeah, like you said, Bloober track, Bloober's track record isn't great. No. Um, they're definitely not the people I would have thought that it would have gone to. But knowing Konami going to Konami and they do whatever the fuck they want, I guess it doesn't really matter to them. Konami I think, Konami I th- don't care. I think they're at the point where they don't care anymore. Yeah. They're, they're making their bajillions in gacha pun machines over in japan they don't give a shit or in collectible card games or any of the other myriad fucking income streams that they have they just this is probably costing them next to nothing yeah, not. in the grand scheme in the grand scheme of things that they just don't care yeah. they're probably just sick of fans screaming about it and they're like fuck it we'll do it well they went this would be and, looks like and, a good way and to make money yeah and they've got the mindset of if we fuck it up so bad they'll stop asking for shit that we don't want to do yeah, or if it you goes know, well, you know, how, like, you, know, you, you know how if you ever get asked to do a job and you just do it so poorly so you never get asked to do it again? I have a feeling that's what could be happening here. I, I have used that technique often. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, if you want to talk about Konami remakes that need to do well, Metal Gear Solid. So the Metal Gear Solid 3 uh, Snake Eater remake, which, you know, of the, of the, of the 2004 incredible game uh according to vgc's andy robinson has stated that uh alongside the remake re-releases or remasters of the other metal gear solid titles are also still on the table and the last time that robinson heard anything about konami's plans it's it was said the e3 window is when the publisher plans to make those projects public which is a problem because e3 is fucking dead uh, I mean, the E3 window still exists. Oh yeah, it's not. It's the it's it's, it's, just, it's, it's now it's now the Keeley screen. Yeah, the Keeley window. <laughs> uh, the rumors of the Metal Gear Solid franchise revival, uh, along with the new Castlevania game, have been doing the rounds for well over a year and a half now. Much like the now confirmed Silent Hill we just discussed, because um, Konami seems to be taking its time announcing because they don't fucking care now i love metal gear solid and metal gear solid 3 is fucking mint and like i still don't think it's the one that needs the remake i think number one remake needs the remake the most but i understand what they're doing they're going in chronological time order and as this one's set in the 60s it makes perfect sense for this to be the first one even though the first game is borderline unplayable where three still plays just fine so Mm. it is a weird choice but i get it i get it Uh, also on the rumor mill, 
and hot on the heels of Marvel Spider-Man 2 leaks, courtesy of Venom voice oh, yeah. uh, Tony Todd. Uh, we've now got Tears voice actor from God of War Ragnarok basically telling us that there's more to come from the franchise. During a God of War PAX East panel over the weekend, Tears' real-life counterpart, Ben Pendergast, came out uh, with, quote, and I'll say this, it isn't the last time you've seen Tear." end quote. While developer Sony Santa Monica Studio has stated that Ragnarok will not be getting any expansions, we can't ignore the possibility of a smaller spin-off title, Tia and his mates. Yeah, but like, look, looking, you know, we thought the same about F- Forbidden West. Burning Shores comes out this month. Like, now granted, God of War 2018 didn't have a DLC because it kind did, of just got extended into into Ragnarok. But did, but did Horizon ever say that they weren't doing DLC? Because they did DLC for the first game. Uh, I don't. I don't remember. Holy fuck, Cause I don't Tony, remember. Because Sony Santa Monica did say they're, they're not doing yeah, DLC. Yeah, they, 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 they flat out said, we're not doing DLC. But it's one of those things, like, you know, we won't spoil the end of the game, but, like, if there is a continuation of this story, I don't know how Tyr will be involved, but holy shit, even if they're like, hang on, hang on. The God of War series, Amazon. This isn't the last you've seen of Tia because they're going to get Ben Pendergast to voice Tia in the Amazon series. There's your answer. Everyone goes straight to the game. Discontinue. Like, because if you imagine, right? He, so t- you reckon they're going to get him to dump over an actor's voice? <laughs> so, do you, so you reckon, is he going to play him or is he going to just voice him? No, he's going to play him. I say voice him because he's a fucking floating head on, on a butt. Like he's, no, that's 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 Mamiya, my dude. That is true. That is Mamiya. Okay, that makes more sense. All right, hang on. Give me a second. Give me a second. <laughs> it changes everything because I just had an up. I'm fucking tired and had a brain fart. All right, let me think about it. Hang on. Mm. This does recontextualize uh. everything so much so that my camera froze. Hang on. But I'm still in the same spot. Um, it's like, hang on. I he's still floating head. What the fuck are you on about? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, That's for me and my Then dude. in that case, I am fucking no. <laughs> He's like, I'll shut up then. Oh, yeah. Mm. I, I stand formally corrected because I'm a fucking idiot. <laughs> fucking moving on. <laughs> moving on and stop bringing attention to it because I just killed myself. Speaking of killing themselves, E3 is dead again. Again. So the, again. the ESA this week announced to its members that the E3 2023 is... Canceled. In, an, in an email shared with IGN, it is revealed that the event was, quote, did not garner the sustained interest necessary to execute it in a way that would showcase the size, strength, and impact of our industry. So this is, fo- this is following Tencent and someone Sega. else pulling out. Sega. Yeah, Sega, Tencent, and I think Ubisoft as if well. If Tencent so pulled it. out, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. A statement from Reed Pop, the organizers of that, including the organizers of PAX, which is also dying here in Australia, and I can t- and I'm discuss on the show why, and I would argue that's probably the same reason they're fucked up here too. The statement reads, quote, This was a difficult decision because of all the effort we and our partners put toward making this event happen. But we did had a, but we had to do what what's right for the industry and what's right for E3. We appreciate and understand that interested companies wouldn't have playable demos ready. <laughs> yeah, that's why. And there re- and that re- uh, resourcing challenges made being at E3 this summer an obstacle that c- they couldn't overcome. For those who did commit to E3 2023, fuck you, we're taking your money. No, editorial, but probably true. We're sorry we can't put on the showcase you deserve and that, you co- uh, that you've come to expect from Reed Pop's event experiences, end quote. Well, I don't think a lot about Reed Pop's, you know, experience, like event experiences. They've really dropped the ball. And like knowing that the, you know, why the big guys aren't appearing at PAX was because they charged PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, as if the event was happening in 2020, 2021, canceled it. But because they ran the event online, they didn't have to pay them back. So then when they, when they went in person, they went, oh, we're back in person because of COVID. We have to charge you more. And they all went, nah, 
And I guarantee, like, if they did that for fucking PAX Australia and there's only one of them, right? I guarantee mm. you they fucking tried to extort all the companies in for E3. And then especially on the back of the likes of Jeff Keighley's Summer Games Fest, when they're like, well, why would we do it for you when we can do it over here? And we don't need to have in-person shit anymore. Like, the, the, the industry has changed at large and Reed Pop is, I think Reed Pop is directly responsible for killing it. And over the last few years, like, <clears throat> it's been prevalent over on PC for a while with, like, um, Steam Next Fest. And, you yeah. you know, you get all those digital playable demos. And we got a lot of them last year on PlayStation and Xbox. It was got, awesome. Yeah, it was great. Um, and if that continues going forward, all the better. Because there are people who would love to go to E3 that can't make it. And having stuff made available to them in the comfort of their own homes that they would be able to play on the show floor anyway, all the better. Anyone that's ever wanted to get into the games business or games industry like we have, like my dream for the longest time was to attend E3 one day. It was to be in that auditorium where PlayStation did their big announcement. Like I wished I was in that room of E3 2016 where they announced like, horizon and days gone and god of war and arkham vr and all these things in this fucking amazing showcase i wish i could have been there but i never could and like e3 does have a lot of love in our hearts you know i i would like when we first started the pop culturist like we started with e3 and i forget what year it was i think it was 2015 and like our first ever coverage was us live streaming those showcases because they were awesome to live stream. There was good stuff happened. And now I don't, we don't live, A, we don't live react anymore, but even then there's no incentive for me to, for us to do them because PlayStation are quiet for one. And, you know, and the second the PlayStation stepped away from E3 X amount of years ago, that's when we stopped caring. That's when we stopped covering it. And it like it breaks my heart because like I like as much as I'm like I shit on E3 and the fact it's dead and like, yeah, you died three years ago, mate. Why are you still fucking alive? Why are you still death rattling over here? It does sadden me to know that it's been so poorly handled because it was such an important part of A, how I started here and my, what my dreams and ambitions were but also just the community experience of it. Mm. Like the event of it was awesome. Like as much as I enjoy just waking up and I get everything I need in email now, I do miss the event. I do miss watching it, writing down, taking notes, getting excited about things as they get, as they happen. Just... Also, I still get that, but I just watched Summer Games Fest or the individual streams from the publishers yeah like i'm, I'm, I'm a lot more like, cynical than that, you that that e3 window still exists for me and it's still that yeah and, but like i don't like that okay. magical time i un I, I agree with you but in terms of how jeff jeff keely makes it feel like an ad oh yeah, for, e, where, yeah where e3 has always been an ad it's a trade show right it's always about hey come buy our shit however yeah. it never felt like an ad to least to me where jeff keely feels like a marketing bro the whole way through so it, to me it feels a lot grosser and a lot of the charm that e3 had is long gone mm. all right quick bits uh persona news is being teased once again yeah. apparently coming this month that's <laughs> ew this is the guy that just bought <laughs> Uh, the late Lance Reddick will be making an appearance in the upcoming Burning Shores expansion. I appreciate that because he spoiled it. He was like, hey, there's DLC. Coming. He's like, hey, I've just done more mocap or whatever. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, nothing. <laughs> it's a patch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Atlas Has Fallen has been pushed back to August. Oh, yeah. The Forspoken prequel DLC comes out in May. Why? Keen for that. Really? Oh, yeah, you uh, end up enjoying it, I suppose. Uh, Square Enix is ruining the upcoming Final Fantasy anniversary by releasing fucking NFT cards. Yeah. Final Fantasy 16 has gone gold ahead of its June release date. Dude, that's brutal. 
Like it's that's April, great. And like that's awesome. It's the start of April, so April, May, June. Yeah, we got yeah. great because it's a. I think it's the front end of June that it comes out. Is it? Yeah, I think so. It's yeah. Mid. Yeah, I don't know. It's somewhere in June. But yeah, stoked about that. Fucking yeah. two more months. Woo. But like, <laughs> obviously, we're not going to get hands on until way later. <laughs> we're having a go gold now, which means it's all polished from here on out. Mm. Which is good news. Makes me excited. <sighs> like, as you said, Final Fantasy is all the way in June. Here's the games that are coming out this week in a section we call new games coming out this week. Uh, April 4th, you get Atari Mania on PS5, PS4. Uh, Creed Rise to Glory Championship Edition, that's the PSVR game, coming to PS5. Meet Yo Maker, your maker, probably should, you know, add, add, add Which um, I'm pretty sure is one of the play- PS5 is. titles. It is indeed. Across the Valley comes April 6th. That's the PSVR 2 farming game. Game that got, that has Ryan's attention quite a lot. Uh, April 7th is EA Sports PJ Tour PS5. Um, Grim Grimoire once more. PS5, PS4 on April 7th. And that is everything. At least for me, I highly recommend you go check out Across the Valley because it's a farming game in VR. Tick, tick for Betson. Um, yeah, that's it. And that's I love a good golf game, it. so that's, you know. John Cena's in PGA Tour this year, apparently. <laughs> uh, I have an email to send to to I Electronic think, Arts. I think so. I, just, uh... I, could, yeah, no, I, I did see, but I thought my brain thought that it was in 2K, but if it's in yeah, PGA... Yeah, John, no, John Cena is coming to PGA Tour 2K23 oh, in April. Well, guess who's emailing uh, yeah, on Monday morning? It's going to be really weird just seeing a fucking golf club swing through yeah, the air by itself. You can't see him. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, speaking of John Cena, I gotta go to bed because I gotta go to Sydney to watch WrestleMania with John Cena opening. He's it's him versus Austin Theory, the United States Championship. John Cena Theory, exactly. He's gonna get his shit kicked in. It's gonna be awesome. I have no idea who's gonna win or not. Who knows? Anyway, Come on, John Cena's coming back for some rando for some rando dude. He's kind of not some rando. But he's also some kind of rando. At least for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap this boy up. Thank you for joining us. As we said, uh, it's always lovely to have people come listen to our shit each and every week. Max, send them home. Let me go to bed. Uh, everyone, this PlayStation conversation happens every Monday morning at 8 a.m. on podcast services, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you want to take part in future conversations with us, come and check out our socials. Facebook, Discord, Instagram, and Twitter. All of those links can be found in the description below. <laughs> Pardon me. If you want to join that conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash popcultures where you can watch us record this show live. We can jump in the chat and become part of the show. If you want to support the show, you can. Tell your friends, tell your favorites, place in podcast. If you are listening on podcast services, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a written review. If you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment below. I just wanted to fuck people that listen to podcasts fast. Yeah, who will come below? I endeavor to answer every single comment. And if you want to support us financially, you can at patreon.com slash the pop culturist, as well as our merchandise store, popculturist.com slash shop, where you can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it. But until next week, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And that was for the players. <laughs>